If you enjoy the channel and our video content and would like to support us, you can do this in a couple of ways. You can sign up to our Patreon site which is a monthly subscription to one of our four tiers, each giving you something different from early access interviews up to exclusive unseen footage. There's also the option of a one-off donation via PayPal which allows you the option to donate an amount of your choice. Both options really help to keep this channel going and to continue putting out regular content for you good folk. So please take a look at aircurrentreview.tv forward slash donate and I thank you in advance. Thank you and enjoy. So in them F sixteen uh, fights, would you be would you personally be using a lot of um, afterburner? Yes, absolutely. The thrust to weight ratio was and is very important to maintain against the F sixteen. Um, we always used to do a uh, used to do a, uh, a coming fast engage short offset. If you can take a short, take a short. Otherwise unload, exit, gain energy, pitch back, come back into the fight. And uh, that is how we used to do it. Uh, we, we also did a lot of IR, BVR with um, these, the, these, in these aircraft, which is um, a heater, which is um, a sidewinder. And on the other side, there was a BVR technology. So uh, within v visual range and BVR technology, how do we fight in, 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 in that circumstance? Mm -hmm. we, we practice a lot with the F-16 as well. So we did a lot of, uh, a lot of flying with the Viper. Yeah, so would you, uh, like as a Mirage team and then the F-16, was the cross and notes there? Did you uh, interact on a weekly basis or how did that work? Well, it was, um, it was a lot to do with the um, syllabi that we were going through. Uh, right. There is a specific cyclic training that we have, and that cyclic training indicates that we have to fly certain types of sorties every year. Um, so within exercises specifically, we used to do a lot of DACT. Other than that, we used to do DACT in the cyclic training as well. So it was, it was, um, it was heartening um, at times uh, once um, we were able to um, win. A fight as well. It's not that every time the Viper shot us down. We there were times once we were able to play our game plan and used to get a shot of the F-16. So that was one few and far between, but there as well. You got there. Yeah. So you mentioned the exercises there. So have you flown on any large exercises and worked with other nations? Well, Turkish uh, have been, uh, the Turks uh, have been there in Pakistan for a while. They've done multiple exercises. The Chinese have been there as well. So being a part of a few, the learning curve tends to be very sharp mm. uh, once you're flying in another, uh, with another country or against another country. Because in the air, uh, we used to fly like, uh, flight like adversaries, but on ground we used to mingle and learn from each other as far and wide as possible. May it be in the debrief room or uh, post debrief in the crew rooms over a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or, or a drink. Uh, may it be Pepsi, Coke or anything else like that. So we used to do that a, a lot. And was there any um, language barrier problems there for, you, for both sides? Well, not really. Um, okay. As I've mentioned, uh, both the countries, uh, the Turks and the Chinese, have come a long way uh, in learning the language and the verbiology of uh, NATO uh, a, uh, English. So they, they've come a long way. The Chinese initially did have a challenge, but it has now been overcome to a, to a huge degree as well. And I forgot to ask you this early on uh, here, Sonny. Uh, did you ever sit QR a lot. A lot, right. <laughs> a lot. We, 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 call, we call it the ADA or the Air Defense Alert. I guess you call it quick response. Uh, quick reaction quick alert. Time. Quick reaction alert. Okay, yeah. pardon me. So we call it ADA, Air Defense Alert. So we did a lot of ADA, um, especially on the eastern border. Okay. I mean, what was that like? Was that fun at all? <laughs> well, um Thrilling, that is what I would put this as. Uh, sometimes it did get boring. We didn't find too much action. 
um, but there were times once we found a lot of action and uh, it was thrilling at times, boring at times. I, I wouldn't uh, say anything else, but uh, we had a lot of French toast and a lot of tea and a lot of <laughs> healthy, unhealthy activities on, on the ADA as well. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. And I noticed in your bio, you also flew um, the Mirage 5. What was the difference uh, coming from the Mirage 3? Was it just an upgrade in the cockpit or weapons? Not a huge difference other than the role. The Mirage 5 uh, uh, was mainly in a maritime process or a okay. many maritime role. Anti-C, anti-submarine. Uh, we used to fly the Exocet uh, AM-39s at extremely low altitudes uh, over the seas, uh, the Arabian Sea and the uh, and the and the territorial waters of Pakistan. Um, so yeah, it was it was a bit different, uh, but once again, uh, it because of the uh, because of the surfaces on the uh, delta wings and the tailless delta if you could trim off the pressure leave it as it is hands off it could do a lot at a very low altitude so there was no upgrades in terms of engines or anything like that not really uh, in the atar uh, 09 c5 engine or the c version the original versions were uh, about it um, we didn't really switch to anything else um, because we have um, a lot of capability that rotates around the Mirage maintenance capability mm -hmm. um, we have uh, in Pakistan uh, a complete overhaul capacity um, of stripping a Mirage and putting it back together again uh, from a whole part whole process so the engines have not been pushed up in any way so in that service, there's no uh, Dassault are not involved, the French are not involved, it's all in-house, as it were? Well, the Dassault initially came in with their training profiles and uh, they had reps at uh, our uh, MRF, or the Mirage Rebuild Factory. Uh, but now it's completely independent. The Dassault, has, Dassault does not have any role to play with it. Um, Senecma as a company uh, for the ATAR uh, 09 engines have no role to play with it. We are doing complete uh, and um, overall uh, of the Mirage aircraft. So what was your favorite role to fly the Mirage in? Okay, so the as I mentioned once again, uh, low level high speed, the best <laughs> role to play for oh, a yeah. Mirage. Ingress at low level high speeds, um, uh, a, a good, a good um, subsonic, transonic speed. Uh, so it could really do a lot there, flying as we used to call it under the radar. Uh, but well, paradigms change, and the shift really did came up, come about with the um, AVAX and the AEW platforms that came into play in the in the region. So there was not really any place that you could really hide even with the terrain hugging that mm. we were intending to do because the high to low profiles of AVAX could track everything and anything no matter how low you flew so yeah but initially it was fun so low and fast <laughs> yep low and fast that's correct so you probably have uh, plenty to share but maybe can you f uh, share a few memorable stories from your time Sony flying the Mirage uh, one interesting one um I was uh, doing a recce sortie with a low wrap in on my center line, 1300 liter tanks. I think I shared the image with you as well. And while taxing out, it's scorching hot. Mm. Uh, it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's uh, about 50 degrees on the tarmac, Charlie. And I am taxing out from uh, from my pen and my hanger, and I see this one guy who is lying on the floor on the on the taxi track and taking a few images and i said who the who the heavens is this guy uh in this in the scorching heat and once i passed by i i saw that was uh, uh, mr alan warns no. uh, he's uh, i guess presently the chief editor for air forces monthly uh, he wow. was he was there for an assignment so he took that snap and that was one of the memorable moments beyond this uh, well, there have been many. Um, 
and some good, some bad. As and I, I would like to share this quote with you and the world through you. Uh, sometimes the pain of being a fighter pilot outweighs the joy of being a fighter pilot. Oh, wow. um, because all fighter pilots, to be very candid, are extremely egoistic. They have a huge uh, zipper down, collar up attitude with them. Uh, they don't like to be beaten in any domain. Uh, but, well, flying humbles you at a lot of places. Uh, may it be uh, military as well as commercial. Because we think of ourselves to be the... Uh, leading edge or the tip of the sword. Uh, but once we find out that there are people who are better than us, there are weapon systems which are better than ours, um, so you, you get to be humbled as well. Um, so, well, the T-38 thing was very, very apt, uh, which I mentioned, go for it, Sunny. And I yanked back and ta 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 and everything <laughs> went bonkers. And I said, man, come on. <laughs> and I and I hung on to it. I did it thrice. I overjeed the T thirty eight thrice. So, yeah. Beyond this, um, we've had multiple ADAs uh, on our um, on our on our eastern border uh, with the adversary there. And there have been multiple times once we have taken off, uh, the visibility has been really bad, and we could never really come back to our home base. Mm. And we used to divert to alternate bases, um, get refueled there, waited for the weather to come back to bare minimas, and then we used to take off from there again. So, uh, yeah, a lot of adventure, a lot of high stakes. Um, yeah, it was fun. And was there ever a point when you were going to work, as it were, and just thought it was another day, another job? Or did, were you always aware that this is a real, I'm a fighter pilot, this is a pretty cool job? Uh, well, it's um, it tends to grow on you, uh, right. but the, the 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 beauty of the system is that if when you master one aspect of flying, then uh, there is the next thing that comes up. Of course. So the system continues to challenge you, and that is where growth takes place as a professional or a fighter pilot. So it's never really a boring day anytime um, you're uh, you're going to the office. So it's a new day, new show every day. Brilliant stuff. So overall, did you enjoy your time with the Air Force and how many hours did you get? Well, I, I uh, flew about 1850 grand total, which included everything from my training flying to the Mirage yes. platform to the T-38 as well. But it was a good approximately 2,000 hours of uh, flying experience. Um, so yeah, I loved every bit of it. So we got a couple of personal ones just to wrap up this interview. So uh, yeah, do you have any hobbies? Yes, uh, to be very candid, I'm, I'm an avid sportsman. I play a lot of tennis, well played. Um, I do play a lot of golf. Um, I love to read. Um, because I, I personally am a staunch believer, readers are leaders and vice versa. Leaders are readers. So we really have to, that is the best way we can gain knowledge. Uh, and self-learning is the best learning. If somebody teaches you something, once again, the ego comes into play. Why is this guy teaching me something? I learn it myself. So self-learning is the best way forward. So I love to read. Um, and I read every day um, in the morning, uh, especially before I start my day. Brilliant stuff. Favourite aircraft you have flown? Flown, Mirage, no questions asked. <laughs> the Mirage, right. One you would love to fly, either past or present? Well, I would love to fly the, uh, the J-10. This is the Chinese version, some people call it a La V copy. Uh, but the J-10 has um, had a lot of capabilities that uh, uh, that are that that outweighs a lot of aircrafts in the uh, in the international fighter aircraft arena right now. That's really interesting because that's a first on the channel, so I've, I wasn't expecting that at all. But uh, that's a great answer. But uh, yeah, Sonny, you're also a published author. Can you tell us about this and how it started for you? 
Well, um, I've always been reading Code One magazines, Air Force's monthly magazines, uh, once we were in the crew room. So I all I was always um, astonished to find people, how can, you know, a, a person write and get published in the process as well. So the first time I got published was 2018, to be very exact. Okay. And I've not stopped since then. Um, and... The latest which I've done is uh, with Combat Aircraft Journal. Um, this is related to uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And coincidentally, it's been picked up as one of the nominees uh, for military aviation uh, wow. in uh, the Aero Media Awards, uh, which take place in Paris with the Paris Air Show or plus minus the Paris Air Show. Um, so, yeah, I, I've been published both academically as well as commercially in, at a few places. It's heartening to share uh, my expertise, competencies, skill sets, and experience um, with, uh, with, with written expression. I do come on a few channels as well, but that is besides the point right now. Um, but published author, yes, uh, it's, it's heartening to see myself being a part of the same magazines which we used to uh, read in our crew rooms uh, in the squadrons. Absolutely. And do you personally, uh, do you work for the ma magazine? Are you independent? Do they come to you or do you go to them? How does it work in case anyone wants to get into writing? Well, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's more to do with uh, if I find something interesting, I do write to them. Um, and uh, there are various magazines uh, and editors and sub-editors whom I'm, I, I'm connected with. Um, sometimes they come back to me if I can uh, share my thoughts uh, in writing on a specific topic. Uh, for example, Ghost of Kiev was one of the hot topics once this Russia-Ukraine thing came about. So I published a few articles, shared my points of view and my concerns to a few magazines, which included the Aerospace from Royal Aeronautical Society, their blog as well. Um, so being there, done that. So it's a it's a it's a mutually accommodative relationship. So I'm not in contract with anyone. I'm more of a freelance thing. But as soon as I find some inspiration for a certain magazine or a certain topic, so I call out to them, write an email. If they find the idea worthy, I'll continue to write. Otherwise move on to the next one brilliant stuff and is there a place where we can find you online links to your you know um articles anything like that i think i'm i'm widely available on the linkedin um I'm, i don't really use a lot of social media platforms um i just uh, skim around maybe twitter or uh, uh i'm not on instagram i'm not on facebook so yeah linkedin is the most apt place you can find me you just google Fahad Ibn Masood uh, LinkedIn and you'll probably come to my profile as well yeah we'll link that in the description but, but before we wrap up here Sonny uh, what's uh, in the future for yourself have you got any projects coming up to, uh, for us to keep a lookout for oh uh, projects well uh, there are a few things on the on the table for me um, I am writing uh, the uh, Mirage role in the Reki platform for a magazine uh, that would be coming up probably in a month or so uh, in which there are a few images, more than a few images as well. So you can you can have a write a, a read up of that. Um, beyond this, uh, I am doing my doctorate or my PhD as well in oh, wow. aviation. So, wow. so my thesis document is also on the way, uh, although it's a bit a bit, a bit far-fetched right now. It's more to do with uh, synopsis and um, literature review for now. The main meat of the matter will come in later, but that will be something worth read or worth a read by anyone who's interested in uh, in aviation as well. So, well, uh, that is mostly it. So no sitting back, relaxing on the beach, busy, busy, busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to be constructively occupied. That's what I've Absolutely. learned in my life uh, because that is uh, how we continue to grow. Um, and I'm a, I'm a believer in the fact um, change is the only constant in life. 
and either we be the change or react to it is an option. So I opt to be the earlier, not the latter. So I, I intend to be the change that I want to see in myself or the people around me or uh, the near and dear ones. Brilliant stuff. Well, some wise words to wrap up there. But uh, Sonny, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's an honor being here. Thank you for your time. And for all uh, budding aviators, I would like you to have a deep insight on air crew interviews because uh, this guy here uh, speaks of a lot of ideas. And as the famous quote goes, weak mind discuss people. Average mind discuss events mm. and the great minds discuss ideas. So for all viewers, I would like you to uh, have a deep insight and a look out for it to interviews because uh, Mike is doing a bang up job and I will be continuously at a watch for your later episodes as well. Well, thank you very much for the kind words there, Sonny. Much appreciated. But I'm sure we'll have you back on the show. But uh, yeah, thanks for now, mate. Pleasure being here. Take care. Sayonara.